Hi there, this is Miss Pearson, and today I'm going to go over mutations with you. So a mutation is a permanent change in the cell's DNA. So cells can make mistakes when replicating or transcribing, but there are repair mechanisms to fix the mistakes, kind of like spell check. So different things will cause mutations. Some can be spontaneous and DNA polymerase can add an incorrect nucleotide. So this happens about one out of 100,000, but proofreading reduces it to one out of one billion. So that's pretty good. Um, we've got things in place that can come in and fix those mutations and drop that rate down to one out of a billion. Um, and the other causes, so chemicals and radiation can be damaging to DNA. So there are these things called mutagens, which are substances of forces that cause mutations in DNA, like radiation. So radiation from the sun, x-rays, airport security screenings, things like that. Um, also chemicals, so like cigarette smoke, uh, nitrate and nitrite preservatives, and barbecuing creates mutagenic chemicals in food. And then um, benzoyl peroxide, which is a common ingredient in your acne products. There are also infectious agents like HPV, which is a sexually transmitted virus, and then Helicobacter pylori. Um, it's a bacteria spread through contaminated food. So if we look at this picture here, of a normal gene versus a mutated gene, you can see that this nucleotide here is different from what it should have been, and it can cause an abnormal protein to be made or no protein at all. And other mutations like somatic mutations, um, that's where the somatic or the body cells have a mutation and it gets passed down to the daughter cell, but not to the offspring. So if we look at a cell here that maybe has a mutation in it, that green part will be our mutation, um, then it can get passed on to a daughter cell. So like after replication and um, dividing, then you can end up with those mutations being put out into the daughter cells from the parent cell. There's also gamete mutations. So um, gamete cells are the sex cells and those mutations are passed to offspring like children and will be present in every single cell. So if we look at this picture here, germline mutations, that's the gametic mutation. Um, so here is that mutation in the sperm. And so when the sperm fertilizes the egg, and the embryo is developing, this whole individual is carrying that mutation and then can give it to its offspring. Where if it's a somatic mutation, um, we have sperm and egg that do not carry the mutation, but then a mutation occurs in the embryo. And so as it develops into a full adult, we've got this affected area. But again, the somatic mutations aren't um, sent down, aren't received. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, they're not passed down. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. So um, that mutation is not passed down to those gametes. So here we have for unaffected sperm because it was a somatic mutation. Ufta. Okay, so other types of mutations, there's point mutation, which is a change in a single nucleotide pair of a gene. So within that, there's substitution, so replacing one nucleotide with another. So there's a silent mutation, so when a nucleotide gets replaced with another one, it still codes for the same amino acid. In a missense um, substitution, one nucleotide gets replaced and will code for a different amino acid. And then in a nonsense mutation, a stop codon 
gets coded for when a nucleotide gets changed. In a frame shift mutation, the mRNA is read incorrectly and it results in non-functional proteins. So this results from insertion, deletion, and duplication. So if we look at those things more closely, if we have UUA, which is the amino acid leucine, if we have a frame shift mutation, um, every amino acid that follows will be altered. If we have a silent mutation, if we've replaced the C, um, or we've replaced the U with a C, excuse me, we still have leucine. In a missense mutation, if we replace the U with a G, we get a completely different amino acid, we get valine. And in a nonsense mutation, we're replacing a U with an A here, and now we have a stop codon. And then if we look a little bit more closely at a frame shift mutation from insertion or deletion, up top we have our normal translation but if we have it shifted one, we end up with this one here, and it's not paired up with two others, so then our amino acid getting red is shifted. So now these amino acids are different from the original and normal translation. If we look at a frame shift where we're moving um, back one, or subtracting, I guess you could say. Um, again, it shifts, right? So we end up with different amino acids. And we have two nucleotides that are missing a partner here to make it three so that an amino acid can be coded for. And again, that's changing our polypeptide chain's amino acids. There are also three nucleotide pair deletion or insertions. So if we look at the wild type on top, we've got our four amino acids here and then our stop codon. Well, when we have a base pair insertion or deletion of three nucleotides, um, then in this picture here, this one is missing. So now we just have three amino acids and then our stop codon. So we've completely removed lysine here. So an example of a point mutation would be sickle cell anemia. So in our wild type DNA, we've got CTA uh, paired with GAA. CTTGAA. -C I think I misspoke. Um, but then when we look at the sickle cell hemoglobin in the mutant, right, this is sickle cell, this is our wild type, normal type, um, our mutant is CAT and then paired with GTA. So these two have basically been flipped. So there's our mutation. So then our mRNA changes too, right? We go GAA for our normal type, and then in our mutant, this is a U. So then when we undergo translation, we've got GLU and VAL. So this U and the mRNA has caused a completely different amino acid to be coded for. So in sickle cell disease, there are a lot of symptoms like anemia, pain, infections, delayed growth, strokes, pulmonary hypertension, organ damage, blindness, jaundice, and gallstones. And again, this is caused by a genetic defect, right, as we just looked at. And sickle cell is carried by 5% of humans. In Africa and different regions, it's actually carried by up to 24% of their population. And then the life expectancy um, is 42 in males and 48 in females. Okay, and then uh, one more here for you. We didn't go over 
the duplication mutation, but here is our normal chromosome on the left, and this region here has gotten doubled. So it's been duplicated, as you can see there. Okay, so if we go through an example here, if we have a DNA sequence that is AAC, GTG, ACT, our mRNA will be UUG, CAC, UGA. And so then our amino acid sequence will be leucine, it gets histine, and our stop. But then if a mutation occurs in our DNA sequence is GAC, GTG, ACT, our mRNA is CUG, CAC, UGA. So if we were to take these and look at our chart, we would still find that it codes for leucine, histine, and stop. So there was no change in our amino acid sequence, right? So we had a neutral mutation. So if we go back to that original DNA sequence, our mutation was right here. We had an A at first, and then our mutation occurred, and we ended up with a G. But again, we still coded for leucine, so we didn't have to change, or we didn't have a change in the amino acid sequence, so we had a neutral mutation. Okay, and here's just a fun video that goes um, through mutations a little bit, and um, it's just interesting, good review, so this can be posted on Google Classroom for you. That's it for mutations, but if you have any questions, please talk to your teacher, um, get some help. Alrighty, thank you. Take care.